Okay, apparently I need to be a lot more descriptive in these, so uh, don't expect all of these stories to end in the same video anymore, so that all of your questions can be answered. Um, I'm going to talk a bit more about my bedroom, so that you understand the transition between it being my grandmother's and mine. When my grandmother died, her room was filled with all of her shit, like her boxes of stuff, and all of her decorations, all of her things, and her bed. And we lived about half an hour away from her house, Hell House, in what I'm going to call the little brick house for these stories. And during the first like eight, eight nine months, after my grandmother died, we were spending like half our time at Hell House and half our time at the Little Brick House. And when we were sleeping at the Little Brick House, I would sleep um, in a hide -a bed I don't remember why we weren't sleeping in our bedroom anymore in the living room. But when uh, I had to go to school, I, al I had already transferred up to the new school district and we'd have to drive all the way up there in the morning. So on school nights, I much preferred to sleep in Hell House, which was only like five minutes away from the school. But we didn't have any of our own furniture in there yet. So I had to sleep in my dead grandmother's bed for a good half a year. And I was surrounded by her things. And during that time, I was slowly gutting the bedroom. And this was during the time that I was having the ticking clock problem. Now I know that the ticking clock stayed in there after all of my grandmother's things were out because none of my stuff got moved into that bedroom until it was completely gutted. There was nothing else in there. It was a completely empty room. I didn't sleep in there for several nights because there was nothing to sleep on. We slept in the little brick house. And the ticking was still there when it was empty. So it's not like I missed a t it's not like I missed a clock. It's not like uh, I kept some of her things. I did keep her things, but I put them in a box and put them in the garage and waited until my things got moved and to put all of her things in with my things because I didn't like feeling like I was taking over her life. I wanted to feel like this was my stuff now. I hope that helps. So once all of my uh, stuff got moved into my bedroom, it was no longer my grandmother's, I started being able to sleep in there every night. And I started noticing something very particular happening. So I'm laying on my bed, starting to fall asleep, and I have an old boombox, one of those big... Uh, boom boxes that you can put tapes and CD players in and it also played the radio and it would plug into the wall and uh, I'd be falling asleep and suddenly the boom box would turn on as loud as it could play and startle me and I ran and turned it off and I would start falling asleep again and it would start blaring again. And this went on for a few nights until I finally broke down and cried to my mom about what was happening. And she told me that that used to be her room for a while. And, uh, not her room, her, her parents' room when she was a kid. And they had to keep all of the TVs and radios in that room unplugged from the wall because at night it would 
blare and turn on and wake them if it was plugged in in any way, shape, or form. So I started a nighttime ritual of before going to bed, unplugging every electronic in the bedroom that could make noise so that I could actually sleep. Because if I didn't, if I forgot to do it even one time, it would get me. And uh, I, it, it was not, uh, you couldn't sleep. It would wait until you were just about to sleep and then wake you up every single time until the sun was up. So nothing could stay plugged in in my room. I had to have access to all of the plugins so that I could remove all the plugins so that it would be livable. I'm in a talkative mood tonight, so let's just keep this ball rolling for now. Um, the next thing that I started noticing in Hell House, once I moved in, happened almost immediately, simultaneously with the radio. Um, this was the man in the bowler hat. The man in the bowler hat liked to stay in the hallway. Now, the hallway connected all of the bedrooms. So here's the living room. The hallway started here connecting to the living room and my bedroom was in the front. And then the hallway went back, connected to the bathroom, the back room, and the red room. So the hallway did connect to my bedroom and the living room. So there was very few places that you could sit where you couldn't see the man in the bowler hat. And this man was seen by many people and described looking exactly the same, so I'll describe him now. He wore a brown suit. It was a three-piece suit that looked like it was from the 1920s. He had short brown hair and a brown bowler hat that uh, he always wore. And this man would stand silently and stare at you. He had a very oppressive vibe, very aggressive and uncomfortable. And most people, like whenever I would have them over for slumber parties and stuff, wanted my bedroom when like my bedroom door closed, so they couldn't see the man in the bowler hat staring at them in the hallway, which I understand. But I was the opposite. I did not want to know that he was out there, feeling him boring holes through my door. And I also did not want to know that the red lights could be out there at any time without me knowing it. So I did the opposite of what everyone else did and I propped my door open. And I made sure to tell the man in the bowler hat that he was not allowed in my room. And I battled with him pretty much every day, keeping him out of my room because he liked to try to push the boundaries and step into people's rooms and leave the hallway. And I was not about to let that happen. So, uh, I, I would not hide from the man in the bowler hat. I would make sure that I could see him. If he could see me, I could, I wanted to be able to see him too. So now I've got to move a little bit from my paranormal stories into some of just what happened around this time so you can understand where I was at in time. So before the story that I'm going to tell you happened, I was not that focused on the hauntings of the house. I kind of tried to ignore it, tried to just keep it at a distance, but I also, if they were looking at me, I wanted to look at it, and I started researching uh, Wiccan, and I eventually very quickly decided I didn't, I wasn't Wiccan because they said they didn't believe in the devil, and I did. Um, but I had a best friend that lived in the school district uh, that the, my old house was in, the little brick house. And 
um, we had been very close since um, third grade, so we were friends for about three years before this happened. I met her when I was eight, and I was twelve at this time. And uh, I didn't know this at the time, but uh, I had a massive crush on her, and we did a lot of romantic things together. And I started getting her into the witchcraft stuff that I was doing. And it was at a slumber party at her house, and her bedroom was in the basement, and her father came down and saw that we were reading my spell book. He grabbed me by the hair, pulled me out into the main room of the basement that was his room, and uh, slammed me against his uh, big armoire that was decorated to be like uh, Chinese birds with mother of pearl. And uh, he pressed me against the uh, 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 cabin or, what, or the, the cabinet with his body until I couldn't breathe while he was telling me that I was evil uh, uh, an evil child of the devil and that, that was he was not going to allow me to uh, lead his daughter into sin and then he sexually assaulted me and when he left me in the basement uh, my friend had watched the whole thing happen she left me alone in the basement and I went under the stairs and hid under there until morning when my mom came and picked me up. And I didn't tell anybody about it. And then the real hauntings in Hell House started. <sighs> okay, apparently I need to be a lot more descriptive in these, so... Alright, let's get into it. Well, we already talked about the ticking. We already know that that's the thing. Um, the reason, okay, now nah, I'll, I'll backtrack. I'm not trying to embarrass anyone, but the fact that we had to sleep on a pull-out couch was because it was just a hoarder as hell, okay? <clears throat> but I'm I'm just stating facts. We couldn't even get into... Anna in John's room at that point. So, yeah. We started sleeping on the pull-out couch. Um, and then... Once they moved over there, they still had to sleep on their dead grandma's mattress for... I don't really know how long, but I know I slept on it as well. Um, that house just never felt settling or comfortable. And I almost never got any sleep when I was there because of the red room. Because from Anna's room... You could see straight to the red room. And that was their parents' room. So, I, I mean, I barely got any sleep when I stayed over. But, it was just creepy. I don't, I don't know. That place was creepy as fuck. And we'll talk more about it when more stories get brought up. Hello. Today I am here with my brosif. Bonjour. Bonjour. And we're going to be doing something fun and new for Hell House. This is our Hell House interview. Words in time. That's okay. All right. One, two, three. Hell House interview. So, what was it like whenever you move, whenever you had to choose your bedroom? Well, um, my choices were either what was known as the red room and I guess what we'll call, um, the backyard room because, um, the window 
uh, significantly pointed out to the backyard and the woods right past it. Um, but the backyard room was much bigger than um, the red room and possibly more bigger than Anna's room, the clock room. Mm -hmm. uh, so I chose the bigger room because I'm a little gremlin that likes to have my space. <laughs> like this was the first um, room of my own that I didn't have to share with a sibling. I'm gonna get all the space I can take, little eight, nine-year-old me, whatever. And did that end up being a fruitful choice? Paranormally. Yeah, <laughs> yeah sure. It Perfect. was fruitful. Perfect. How so? Well, um, like I mentioned, it um, had a window that looked straight out into the backyard and the woods, which um, our fence had a um, gate that opened into it, and the woods itself had a, um, a path that would split a little ways into the woods um, to either the left or the right. And after that was a, um, like, a steep dip down into one of the several creeks that were in that forest. And that forest um, was terrifying. Um, in day or at night, it always felt like there was something just underneath your feet that was, you prayed that it was asleep. Mm, that's a good way to put it, yeah. You hoped it was asleep. Because mm -hmm. sometimes it was. And sometimes it wasn't. And that was, um, no one wanted to be in that room except me, basically. Yeah, I didn't want to be in there. Mm. And I don't really regret it, though. And we're back with John and Phil. Hello. I'm petting the cat. So, what was it like being able to see those woods from your bedroom? Well, I had either one of two compulsions. Either to um, be on the lookout and watch out that back window to make sure nothing in the night time start coming out from the woods. Um, not like, a, you know, like cougars or anything like that, which we did have some, like, uh, bigger cats like that around there. Um, more like, um, shadows. A kind of darkness that even at night, nighttime isn't that dark, you know? Yeah, and we'll talk more about what the darkness did, too, in mm -hmm. later stories, because it got pretty bad. Yeah, but, you know, so I'd either want to uh, watch out that window, so I kept a little space of the blinds open at all times, so I could do that. But other times, I didn't even want to have it in that goddamn window in my peripherals. Mm. Um and uh that's part of the reason why i got curtains around my bed um another reason is because you know i just like having little cubbies and spaces little goblin you do um but that forest reached out past even its tree line um and it didn't seem to care that there were houses there it knew where its home was yeah so now I have to ask, what were your two safe zones? Like mine were my bedroom and the dead end. What were yours? Well, like my room, um, I made it, you know, pretty comfortable to stay in. And my bed specifically, I made so I could just hunker down in there with anything I needed. Um, like I had a little lamp had little like pouches and stuff where yeah. I could keep my stuff. What kind of bed was it? It was a bunk bed. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the other place I uh, spent a lot of time was the basement, which was where a lot of the times it seemed that the things living in the woods would come into the house by. It was the door down there that 
like the front door to the house, love to open by itself. Mm, that's interesting. We'll, we'll come back to that in the next part. Mm. And we're back like a year to turtles. Yo, turtles. All right, we were talking about the basement. Tell me more about your time down there. Well, there was a total of four rooms, the main room, a uh, laundry room, uh, then the two back rooms, which uh, one was uh, at first uh, the um, sleeping quarters of our uh, cousin who lived with us for a while. Uh, uh, his name was George. Um, he lived with us for a good while. I don't remember uh, exactly how long, but... A little so, over a year, I think. Yeah, it was, it was a decent while. But after that, um, that's where our dad set up his own um, computer to, um, as he said, to to do business on, uh, and also some other skeevy shit. Uh, skeevy. Another, that's another topic. Yeah. But uh, I stayed um, in the big main room, and the other little room, no one really touched, because uh, it was it was a nasty little spot. Yeah, the 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 very back room was mm -hmm. like filled with the sump pump and yeah, we sewage had really, treatments. Yeah, that house had really, really bad uh, sewage problems because mm -hmm. it was built also um, basically on a swamp. That forest used to be a swamp. Um, so I stayed in the main room where there is a uh, big fish tank that had. Some, uh, I think saltwater fishies in it. Mm -hmm. I love those little fish. I did too. Um, there is uh, my drum set, uh, the old computer that we lovingly called Frank Computer. We've <laughs> we had that since before we got the Hell House, um, and that's where I usually was was playing World of Warcraft <laughs> or doing Warrior Cat role play on forums. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I was. I was nine to fucking twelve. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, but it's forgivable. Mm, mm. The basement was teeming with critters of the supernatural variety. Um, the uh, crawler that lived under the stairs in the um, laundry room. Um, was a menace and loved to chase people up the stairs. Yeah, the best way I could describe it would be like a shadowy evil golem. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Um, never got off all fours. Um, and then things would come in through the door, which was uh, on the far end of the room. And it had locks on it and stuff.